Hey, this is Jonathan Pasley, and today is March 18th uh, at about 6.08 p.m. Um, I'm backdating. I'm backdating, so I've taken notes throughout this journey, and right now I'm backdating to when I was kind of fully on Gerson's therapy. So I did a video about my first week on Gerson's therapy and my first day, so check out those videos. Um, this is the second week being on, on Gerson's therapy and you've seen the other videos, Gerson therapy is, is not an easy diet to uh, be consistent with. Um, 13, fruit, uh, 13 veggie juices a day that you have to make fresh, 5, enemy, five coffee enemas, you have to make all of your uh, meals, breakfast, lunch, dinner, fresh, they're all veggies, uh, no protein or no uh, meats, no uh, proteins in the form of meat. No salt, um, no fats, <laughs> really, really difficult. <laughs> and that's kind of just the tip of the iceberg. They want you to do some other things too as well, and, you know, as far as uh, like not rubbing any kind of lotions or chemicals on your skin, um, using all filtered water to filter out uh, the fluoride. And they want you to get a, um, a, a shower head that filters out fluoride so your skin doesn't come in contact with it. So. Uh, you know, there's other little things in there that they want you to incorporate um, too as well, but I gave you the main gist of Gerson's therapy. So, I want to get to week two, and I'm going to be looking back and forth between my, my notes on my phone that I um, that I took actually during, during week two. And this was um, the week of the 15th of October of 2016. And, um, alright, so... This week, this second week, I came to the realization that I wasn't going to stress myself out in trying to stick with Gerson's therapy almost word for word. It's a very strict diet, um, and it's almost impossible to follow if you're working full-time, if you have just full-time responsibilities. I mean, it, it was really, really difficult. At the time I had uh, a child that, when well, my son was under the age of one, um, he was maybe uh, just kind of snowballing here, maybe seven months around there, old. Um, my wife's pregnant. Um, I'm trying to run and maintain a business at the same time. Uh, so, trying to create a juice every hour and make all those meals and. It was stressing me out. It was, I felt like doing more harm than than good. So I stopped worrying, I stopped stressing out, and I was like, hey, you know, it's, it's okay. I'm just gonna do my best. And sometimes that's all you have, just to do your best. Um, so I ended up doing about, uh, about five to six juices per day and a two to three coffee enemas a day. Um, you know the the salt thing I would use salt very sparingly um, and at this time I was I'd probably eat like fish maybe once a week or something like that um, cause at this time I went to one of my favorite kind of healthy restaurants called Zia's and had a had some tuna um, now I'm not endorsing I'm not saying you do the same thing but it is it is the most that I could do. <laughs> it was the most I could do. The mo the best that I could follow um, the Gerson's kind of protocol. Um, and I was feeling pretty good. Just kind of looking at notes here. I was feeling pretty good. I felt like my body was healing. Energy was, um, you know, on the on the up and up. Um, the back pain I had was starting to kind of fade and go away. And, just throughout this journey, there's there's ups and downs. There's times where I felt good, times where I felt terrible, times where I felt okay, times where I felt like this is it. I mean, <laughs> so there was, you know, there's just ups and downs. But at the end of the second week, I felt pretty good. Um, you know, I just I gave that worry up um, and just really just trusted God and was excited to just kind of move forward and see what God has in store for me. Um, 
went to my arthritis doctor that week and um, so one of the kind of theories of how I got cancer and how these tumors started to grow in my stomach and my liver was uh, through taking Humira for basically 10 years. Uh, it's kind of one of the theories, one of the doctors came up and said that that might have been the cause of of uh, the tumors and the cancer. So again, I was really, really skeptical uh, on taking Humira. I stopped, the doctor, or my arthritis, arthritis doctor told me to stop, which is cool and all until the pain starts kicking in, uh, which it did like after like four months, it started, pain started kicking in really, really heavy. Um, almost unbearable and couldn't like function on a daily basis. <laughs> um, so I actually ended up taking a dose of Humira like again four or five months after um, this whole incident uh, with me being in the hospital and them removing the tumors and things uh, just because I, I couldn't bear the pain really. Um, so I did that and um, I had a follow-up appointment with arthritic doc, the doc, doctor, arthritis doctor, rheumatoid doctor, the the second week here on Gerson's therapy, and um, he actually recommended another medicine called Cocentrix, uh, which he said is fairly new, but it's been you know on the market for last you know year or two, and he's been monitoring and he's seen some good results from it. I uh, can even put the arthritis in remission, which was pretty exciting to hear um, and it was safer from you know Humira than the Humira um, so started taking that um, but even I was skeptical of that I mean now I'm like skeptical of all medicine you know <laughs> it's like you know the last medicine did this I don't know you know so uh, that was the beginning of that I'm getting that news uh, from from my uh, my doctor one of my really good friends um, me and my wife like to call our godparents. Um, he sent me a verse that was really, really applicable to my journey and and just everything that was going on. And it was uh, Psalms 41 through 3. And it was really a, a confirmation, just a reminder from God about my situation. I want to read it for you. Let's go to it. Okay, so Psalms 41. I'll just keep reading down. <laughs> so Psalms 40. Um, so it says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadily, or steadily, uh, and, and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. He'll put their trust in the Lord. Um, and then just kind of scrolling down to, actually I'll read the rest. Uh, so from there, uh, so the verse four, oh the joys of the, oh the joys of those who trust the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud, or in those who worship idols. O oh Lord my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried or said all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. So how this was very applicable to to my life, my, my situation, my journey. And I'm just going to pull my notes back up. <laughs> uh, let's see. So, if you read, uh, as I read in that verse here, you know, I patiently waited for the Lord to help me, and he turned to me and heard my cry. And, I mean, through this journey, you know, the emergency surgery, throwing up blood and hearing that hey Jonathan you have cancer and now you can't take your arthritis and arthritis medicine now pain's coming back so you're battling arthritic pain and, and, and cancer and you know many times I'd, 
all the time. I'd be praying and crying out to God, honestly, to, for help, and um, you know, throughout this journey, um, and I'd you know wait patiently for Him to help me. Um, and just like this verse says, Psalms 40, uh, verse one, oh, Psalms 40. <laughs> um, and just this last piece here. Uh, he has given me a new song to sing a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. So like, it spoke to me because sometimes you just have to be patient, you know, and God's working even though you don't think or see that he's working. He's working in the background. And uh, it's just a matter of time. You got to learn, sometimes you have to learn some lessons. You have to, um, you know, get stronger kind of for the next step in life or whatever it is um that be may, that may be next in your life whatever god has planned for you and, and same situation for me and you know through all this um you know god's worked in me um and i really like the part many will see what he has done and be amazed and you know, some people have already kind of heard and seen my story and have been inspired um, and has helped them, encouraged them. Um, so again, that really resonated with me because, you know, I really feel that God's put me through this journey to be a, a testimony and to really encourage and help others too as well. And, and so that, you know, God, people will see what God has done in my life uh, and I'll help encourage them, increase their faith or, or help them in whatever kind of way. And that's why I do these videos. Um, even though at first, um, I, you know, I had my reservations about it because I'm kind of a private person. Don't really like to put stuff out there like this, but, um, you know, I'm hoping this will help someone, encourage someone, help someone through whether it's through cancer, whatever medical challenges or whatever challenges in life period. And you may see this and it may be encouraging to you. Um, and that's what I'm hoping for. That's why I do these, these videos and also Okay, Psalms 40 at the towards the end. Um, here, actually, Psalms 40 verse five. Um, o Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. And very applicable to my life because. God has saved me from so many things, <laughs> from car accidents to being in the wrong place at the wrong time, where things could have gone completely differently in another direction, which could have changed my life um, drastically. You know, God protected me from those things um, on many, many occasions that I know and things that I didn't, didn't even realize. Um, so sometimes it's hard to have faith because it's like, you know, we can't actually see God, right? We can't like, you know, talk to him and he talks back, you know, right to us. So it's sometimes hard to believe in what you can't see, you know, walk by faith, not by sight. Um, but sometimes if you just look back at life and see all the things God has brought you through, and in my situation, all the things God has brought me through, protecting me from, showed up where I, I know it was it was definitely God, not me or some other circumstance. You know, it was definitely God ordained. Uh, you look back at those things, and it's like there's the proof, proof. You know, there's the proof that God is real. God works, and God is. God's got your back, <laughs> at least for me, got my, got my back, and he has, you know, plans for good, plans for hope, and, and not for um, disaster or turmoil or anything like that, so if you are low on your faith, saying, hey, you know, I don't know what's going on here, I don't, you know, you're struggling, just think back about all the things God has done for you in the past, saved you from blessed you with whatever it may be there's your proof he's done it before he'll do it again he'll get you through this 
uh, trial or, or, or challenge or, or detour uh, in your life. And um, that's what helped me. One of the things that helped me through this journey, um, you know, God has a, a purpose for our lives, you know, and um, again, he's shown up in, in, in your past. So hold on to what he's already done before, you know, and have faith that he'll come through again on, on this time and this challenge. That's, that's what I hold on to. That's what I believe. Um, hopefully it helps you too as well. Um, so yeah, that's, those are my, my main notes. I had one last note there too as well. It's just as far as challenges go, trials, why do they happen? Why does this happen to me? And, or, or you or whoever. And, you know, we always sometimes think that or say that. And I firmly believe God allows challenges, negative things to happen, trials to happen in your life to evolve you mold you into the person that you need to be in order to get to the next level. Um, whether it's to make you stronger mentally, to increase your faith, to um, garner new skill, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be. I feel like, kind of like a video game, right? Each level in a video game you have to beat a certain boss at the end in order to get to the next level. Or you have to, you have to learn certain skills and had certain experiences in order to now go to the next level because those same skills, experiences that you learned in the previous level, you now have to use that to get through the next level. I feel like it's the same thing with life. You know, you go through challenges, obstacles, and things like that in order to get the skills, the experience, the strength in order to get to the next level to eventually win the game, you know, win, you know, um, yeah, to, to, to beat the game. Same thing for life. You, you, you Step by step by step by step, you learn different things in different periods in your life to get you to the next step um, so that you're well prepared to get to the end, you know, and, and accomplish whatever it is your, your purpose or your your mission um, is is for life um, so that um, so one guy can use you um, and um, and also that you can fulfill your your destiny your purpose in life. That's what I believe. That's what I believe life's like a video game each level each challenge prepares you for the next um, So that you can win the game. So Hopefully that helps you encourages you um, in your trial and your challenge It's temporary. It won't last forever make sure you learn Whatever it is the lesson is, the skills, whatever it may be, make sure you learn that. Um, it might it's hard. Again, it's a lot easier to say than do, but there's typically always a lesson to be learned in your challenge. So find whatever that is, learn from it, heal, and you know, move on to the next step. Move on to the next step to fulfill your purpose your mission, your journey in life. All right, those are my thoughts for today. I'll see you on the next video.